Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Performing Arts Series brought to you by the Kennedy Center and the Prince William Network. I'm Jason Moran. This is Taurus Mateen on the bass, everyone. And Nasheet Waits on the drums. Right? Before we begin today's program, I want to remind you that this program is interactive and you will have an opportunity to ask us questions later in the broadcast by using the 1-800 number and the email address on your screen. So, let's talk about music today, or let's listen to music today. What I want you to grasp from today's performance by the bandwagon is how to listen to rhythm, how to listen to melody, and how to listen to language. It's very important to us, and uh, we're gonna play you music that kind of really uh, brings that to the forefront. So we're gonna play a piece of music now called Jump Up, but at the beginning, you'll hear something that is quite unusual. Good evening. Oh, excuse me, I was looking for the bandwagon party. Uh, this is it, sir. <laughs> larger sense, though, I think we represent all of you on this project. Ain't but one kind of blues, and that consists between male and female that's in love. But I thank y'all for all the love you sent me.
Thank you. Thank you. So that's a blues. And that's somebody from Rwanda. And that piece of music, we use three different rhythms. We use a rhythm from Rwanda, from the Hutu tribe. We use a rhythm that's kind of from, I like to say it's from Chicago, that's the shuffle. And then there's another rhythm, the swing rhythm. So we use all three of these rhythms in this blues. So I want to play you examples of these rhythms so that we're going to play the song again, and maybe you can hear those rhythms when we play it. So this is the first example. These are the tribal drummers from Rwanda, the Hutus. So that doesn't sound like Beyonce, does it? Sounds like something else, right? So we're going to have Nasheed demonstrate on the drums what that rhythm sounds like when we translate it. Right? And so if we decide to play with Nasheed playing that rhythm, this is what we'll sound like. And we'll also play along with the Rwandan drummers so you hear the true root. That's what it sounds like when we play with it. So when we play that rhythm later on, remember what it sounds like. Remember what that sounds like. The next rhythm is the shuffle. You heard of the shuffle, right? Something that makes you want to shuffle. Now she's going to demonstrate. So when Taurus plays the exact same rhythm on the bass, it sounds like this. If I join Taurus by playing that rhythm on the piano, I'm gonna shuffle some more.
Remember that rhythm. That's the shuffle. So we got two rhythms now, the Hutus and the shuffle. We're going to go all the way over now to the swing rhythm. This is Nasheed doing the swing rhythm. It's got more air in it than the other two. Kind of opens up. When Taurus plays his bass line with that, it's going to feel like that. So he's walking along. And if I join them on the piano, I might play something like this. So now, think you can remember those three? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. So here's the test. We're going to play jump up again. When you hear the rhythm, yell it out. If you hear the Hutu rhythm, which sounds like this. Say Hutu. When you hear the shuffle, Say shuffle, and when you hear the swing, right, say swing. So I expect to hear y'all, even y'all in the classrooms. All right, here we go. y'all get some of them right? I think you got some of them right. So as long as we now start to listen to everybody as a group, you start to listen to the drums, you start to listen to the bass, you start to listen to the piano, and how we form a conversation together. That's what becomes important. In another piece of music that we're going to demonstrate now, we want to talk about melody, right? Like melody is what you hear right now. You hear that cell phone going off, that has a melody in it. My voice has a melody in it. <laughs> if Taurus and Nasheed start having a conversation behind me, but it's not really loud enough to hear, they really kind of become oh, harmony yeah, in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. See, but you're not really yeah, paying exactly attention right. to them because you're really just listening to me, right? Like my voice is louder than theirs, hopefully. Right? You're listening to me like I'm really the melody. See, like don't pay attention to them though. 
Don't pay attention to them. See, they're just making noise back here, but I'm your melody. I'm the one you listen to, right? When you're doing your homework, you're sitting in class and you're writing out your assignment. If you're at home and you're sitting at your table, you're doing your math homework, but your sister's trying to bug you over here and your mother's trying to bug you by something else, they are the harmony that's trying to disrupt you from your assignment, which is your melody. So what happens when you forget about melody? Or what happens if you only pay attention to melody? I'm going to play a song now, which is quite an um, important piece of music for the civil rights struggle since it's Black History Month. This is a song called Lift Every Voice, and this was written uh, by John Johnson. And this is, um, I'm going to play the melody by itself, and um, just listen to the melody. Once the band comes in, then you'll know that it is, they're bringing in the harmony. So that's a very important piece of American history that you just heard. I'm sure you all have discussed that song in class. It's quite pivotal for us and for you. So the thing about that song when we play it is we want you to hear the melody. We want you to understand where it comes from. So we played it like that so it's very clear. So now you have it in your mind. Just like you were hearing those rhythms before, now you have those rhythms in your mind. And then when you hear us play them, then you understand how we can change them. So when we play the song, Lift Every Voice, we like to accentuate certain parts of the melody and hide other parts of the melody. But your job as the listener is to see if you can still hear the melody even though we're not playing it. And sometimes we'll be playing it with your brain and sometimes we won't be playing it. And we expect you to still hear it in your mind. So here is the abstract version of Lift Every Voice.
right? You could hear the melody, then you couldn't hear the melody, how the band strays away from the melody, then returns to the melody. It really is like doing homework, where you do the first four problems and then you decide, okay, I'm gonna go eat some donuts, and then I'm gonna come back and finish the rest of this homework, right? And if, uh, when you get back to class today, then find out the lyrics to that piece of music and then learn to sing it because it is a beautiful song that hopefully the world could sing very easily. We're gonna move on to the last piece of information. So I'm sure in that last piece you heard Swing Return, where we played the rhythm swing and we're talking about melody. Now we're gonna talk about language. We use language in a way, since we travel all around the world playing concerts in Japan, in Germany, in Brazil, just everywhere, and we hear language in a way that seems quite strange. When somebody asks you at a restaurant, what do you want to eat? and uh, you have no idea what they're saying, or you can't read the menu. So, I'm gonna play you a language, and you let me know if you can guess what language this is. Şu an Jason'la birlikte otelin odasındayız. Işıklar harika. Türkiye, valla baya karışık. İstanbul'daki insanlar garipler ya, anlayamadım. Çocukları soymaya çalıştılar valla. Telefonum çalıyor. Ringing my phone. <gülüyor> Efendim anne. Oturuyoruz anne. Yani duymadım ben hiçbir tane telefonunu biliyor musun? Şimdi gördüm. Otelin otur oturuyoruz odasında. Konuşuyoruz yani. Şu an sesimi çekiyor. Alem ya. <gülüyor> sesimi çekiyor. Hani müzik yapmak için demiştim ya ben sana. Hatırlıyor musun? Ya çok komik ya. Olamaz öyle. Bütün kapalı çarşı Sultan Ahmet, Topkapı Palas, Ayçiçek, <gülüyor> Topkapı Sarayı. <laughs> good, good, good guesses though. Very good guesses. You're in the right region. But say if you go further east in Europe, you arrive at a country called Turkey. That's Turkish. Did somebody yell Turkish, but I just didn't hear them? Oh, they did. Yeah, but they cheated. <laughs> so this is Turkish. So. I was always wondering how does language relate to the instrument and how can I play language on the instrument? So I'm going to demonstrate what Turkish sounds like on the piano. Şu an Jason'la birlikte otelin odasındayız. Işıklar harika. Türkiye valla baya karışık. İstanbul'daki insanlar garipler ya. Anlayamadım. Çocukları sormaya çalıştılar valla. Telefonum çalıyor. Pretty wild, right? Pretty wild. So, at that point, what I usually do when I'm traveling is, is I ask, when we're in foreign countries, I ask the friend of ours who is showing us around the city, this is in Istanbul, Turkey. She showed us around the city. We went to see all of these great tourist sites. And at the end of the day, I held out a microphone and I started recording her and I said, well, tell me about the day. So she says, okay, well, I took you here, I took you here, I took you here. And then all of a sudden her cell phone rings and she picks up the cell phone and it's her mother talking on the other end of the line. But we only are hearing the girl's conversation. We can never really hear what the mother's saying. So I decided to translate that into a band composition. So we created a full composition based only off of her side of the conversation. So you can imagine maybe what the mother is saying. Actually, just imagine your conversation with your mother on the phone. And then see, you know, you can tell your parents when you get home, we saw a band today, the bandwagon, and they can take our conversation and fully orchestrate it as crazy or as sane as you like. So here's the song, Ringing My Phone. Şu an Jason'la birlikte otelin odasındayız. Işıklar harika. Türkiye 
Valla baya karışık. İstanbul'daki insanlar garipler ya anlayamadım. Çocukları soymaya çalıştılar bana. Telefonum çalıyor. Ringing my phone. <gülüyor> Efendim anne. Oturuyoruz anne. Yani duymadım ben hiçbir tane telefonu biliyor musun? Şimdi gördüm. Oteli otur, oturuyoruz odasında. Konuşuyoruz yani. Şu an sesimi çekiyor. Alem ya. <gülüyor> sesimi çekiyor. Hani müzik yapmak istemiştim ya ben size. Oturur musun? Ya çok komik ya. Allah Allah. Bütün kapalı çarşı Sultan Ahmet. Yok kapalı falan. Ay çok <gülüyor>
Very interesting piece of music. All about communication, all about communication, all about communication. Before we continue, I'd like to invite the view audience to begin sending us their questions. The phone number and the email are on your screen, and we'd love to hear from you. So, in the meantime, we want to invite up three Hilton High School students so they can begin their compositional exploration with us. We're going to create a new composition only for you all with three of your great students. Here they are. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask these brave, brave souls, <laughs> ask them some questions. And their answers will be the fruit of our composition. So let's start on the end. Here's the first question. What is your name? My name is Allie Vallow. My, it's Allie Vallow. My name is Allie Vallow. That simple or complicated. Moving right along. Next question. What did you eat for breakfast this morning? For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. Hmm, that's a nice bass line. Who knew cereal could be that flavorful? <laughs> this is a hard one. It's more difficult for, for me to play this. <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? What is your birthday? My birthday is October 21st, 1990. <laughs> My birthday is October 21st, 1990. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. So now we're going to put all these together. So you're going to hear a strange collage right now, but you know the fruit, which is simple answers. And we're going to ask them to help us out and continue to say these phrases so we can remember them. My name is Allie Vallow. <laughs> For breakfast, My I had a bowl of cereal. <laughs> My name is Ali Vallow. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. My name is Ali Vallow. For breakfast, My birthday I had a bowl is cereal. October 21st, 1990. My, My name is Allie Vallow. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, For breakfast, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. Breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. I had a bowl of cereal for breakfast. Oh. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. My name is Ali Vallow. For breakfast, I had a bowl of cereal. My birthday is October 21st, 1990. Give them a big round of applause, the future composers of America. <laughs> so, 
that was thrilling for us and a great, great challenge. So I'm glad we were even up for that. Let's, we'd like to answer some questions. So let's start with in the house. How are you? Um, what are the different types of drumsticks you are using? These are just regular, st you're talking about the brand? No, like the just types. like different types. This is just a regular wooden hickory stick. Yeah, this, this, these particular ones right here, these right here are of mallets with the regular stick on the other end and the mallet on this end. And then right here, these are brushes. These right here make, the, make that sound. Right? So we have uh, an email question. Where do you get your inspiration when composing? Hmm. I think we kind of just started to answer some of that. We actually get our inspiration really from everyday life. We get it from Ali Vallow. <laughs> we get it from, from hearing language. We get it from traveling around the world, hearing different styles of music and uh, from our own life. Taurus, where do you get your inspiration? A lot of times, inspiration comes from just living life and experiencing things that would cause you to have happy thoughts, sad thoughts, uh, you know, uh, spiritual thoughts, things like that. Yeah. Nashi? That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, inspiration, inspiration comes from each, each sector, every, every sector of, of life. Dreams, you know, anything, anything can, anything can inspire you to compose. All right. We have another email question. Hmm. What artists have you played with? Wow. Well, besides these fine gentlemen, um, I play with some great jazz artists like um, <laughs> Wayne Shorter, Dave Holland. Uh, these are quite luminary people. Um, Andrew Hill. Um, Cassandra Wilson is a great singer. Um, Taurus has played with a host of uh, hip hop people. Tell us who, you, who and who you played with. Well, let's see. Let me start uh, from like some of the jazz first, since this is jazz. <laughs> Eddie Cleanhead, Vincent, Eddie Harris, Betty Carter, uh, Mill Jackson, uh, Lionel, Lionel Hampton. Um, then to Lauren Hill, to Ghostface, to Ice Cube, Goody Mob, Monica, um, Common, The Roots. It's a lot, a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nishi? Uh, let's see, mine, Max Roach, uh, Andrew Hill. We all had the pleasure of playing with Sam Rivers. Sometimes we get an opportunity to play with him. Um, actually, played with Most Def and Talib Kweli, the Black Star. Um, there's so many people out here. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, we meet a lot of people around the world. So, and now we've also played with the three that just came up here, BJ, Matt, and Ali Vallow. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right here, how are you? What is the first step in composing a song? Say that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> What is the first step in composing a song? The first step in composing a song. Well, I like to think inspiration is the first, first step. Um, sometimes you can determine it from where you want, if you can think about where you're gonna go in the music. So if I say, I want this to be a serious piece of music, then I'll try to think about something serious. Even like I wrote a piece of music that is all about me studying music as a seven-year-old and my mother taking lessons during my Suzuki piano lessons and hearing her writing next to my lesson was driving me crazy. So when I made the recording for this song, I played the song straight and then I overdubbed just the sound of writing like So the inspiration really comes from life experiences um, and what my connection is to my instrument, you know. And those are the first steps that it takes. That's the first step. I have to have that first initiative, right? But maybe sometimes it could be a chord first or the melody first. Yeah, different things. Or the rhythm first. Yeah, yeah. So like in this previous composition we played, 
my name is Ali Vallo, that rhythm became the first step in the composition. So um, we have an email question. Where did each of you study music? At what college? Nasheed, where did you study? I studied music is a, my studying music has been an ongoing process. I don't, I don't feel like I've finished yet. It's, that's not gonna finish until the day I'm in the casket. Uh, I initiated my study at home with my father, Freddie Waits, who was a drummer. I formally studied music at Long Island University, though, who I, taught, who I was taught by Michael Carvin. That was my formal drum teacher. I, I really didn't have any what you would consider formal training musically, like going to a music college or something like that. I came up playing music in a very musical city in California where there were bands rehearsing in different radius, block radius, you could hear them, they just finished and now we start, okay, we had to stop because we were younger, you know, but then in high school, junior high, just regular being in jazz band, orchestra, you know, went to college in, in um, Atlanta, Georgia, Morehouse, and was on a music scholarship, but ultimately it wasn't really about music <laughs> at that school, so. Yeah, it's just living life, playing music every day, really, is how I learned, yeah. And I went to uh, Manhattan School of Music in New York, where I studied with uh, Jackie Bayard, one of the great pianists of, uh, of America. So yeah, that's where we went. Here in the house, how are you? I'm fine. Good. How does today's music relate to jazz? Hmm. Today's music. Well, first thing is, we are a part of today's music, so <laughs> we are today. Um, and also, like a person like Taurus, we were on ca in California playing a concert but dur at that night, but during the day, he was in the studio with Christina Aguilera recording with her. So I'd like to say that we are responsible for a lot of the music that you actually hear on your radio. Uh, we contribute to the, to the sounds that you hear coming from the radio. So in that way, it relates very much to jazz. It's not maybe how does today's music relate to jazz, it's how does jazz relate to the, today's music. And in that way, it's very, very integrated. A lot of our friends play with a lot of people that you all probably listen to, you know. You wanna answer that, Nasheed? All right. <laughs> how are you? Good. Who leads the band? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, I like to say, I do, since I pay everybody. <laughs> He's the leader. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, in that way, that only goes into that territory. What usually happens on the bandstand is that the communication really leads each other. So what you were witnessing for the past 45 minutes was this kind of ongoing communication and our thoughts surrounding certain songs, and then that ends up leading the band. Uh, we have an email question. Uh, who are, oh, actually, Oh, who are some of the musicians or groups you like to listen to? Hmm. Well, we're listening to MF Doom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do y'all know who that, who that is? The, the guy, the guy who does the music for the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm listening to MF Doom, Marvin Gaye, and and Bob Marley a lot lately. I'm normally having to listen to music that I'm producing in different recording sessions and stuff like that because I, I edit and mix and vocal produce and stuff. And so a lot of the music that I hear <laughs> is the music that I'm making with other folks, mm -hmm. you know. But I like to listen to the bandwagon. <laughs> yeah, I like the bandwagon too. They're really great. As well as a group like the Beach Boys, uh, and uh, the Roots, I think the Roots and the Beach Boys have a lot in common. <laughs> Here in the house, how are you? Fine. When did you first meet and how long has this group been to performing together? The, um, we met each other at different times. I met Nasheed while I was still in college. Um, that was like 1995, I think we met, 94, 95. And I didn't meet Taurus until many years later, maybe 1998. And then this band formed because other, we used to play with other bands, but they fired us. And so we ended up becoming our own band. <laughs> and in 
And uh, we've been together since 1999, so it's going on eight years now. So by the time you graduate, you know, the 10-year reunion tour will be going on. We look forward to seeing you all there. <laughs> we have another email question. What advice would you give young musicians today? Keep, keep, keep, keep, keep, keep, keep practicing, for real, and be serious about it. If you're serious about music, you can make a, a living, you know, and have a career in music, but you have to be very serious. It's like someone who wants to be a lawyer. You have to do your research and your homework and then apply it in the field. And applying it in the field is playing for as many as people as you can, you know, out, not inside your house, but like go out and let people hear you because their response to you will allow for you to understand if you're good or not. Yeah. Don't be parochial in the sources that you draw from to influence you. So don't just be like, okay, no, I only like hip hop or I only like classical, you know, draw from everything because there's great music out there and everywhere and every culture, you know, check out East Indian music, check out the Hunza, check out um, jazz, check out, you know, r and B. I I mean, there's great music everywhere. And if you can find something in all those, in all those musics that you like, it'll make you a more well-rounded musician. Well, sadly, we've run out of time. So once again, let's give Taurus Mateen a big round of applause, everybody, even in the classrooms. Give a big shout. Nasheet Waits on the drums, everyone. I'd like to thank the, uh, the, the students in the auditorium for being here and uh, the viewing audience across the country. It was a, truly a blast for tuning into this program. If you didn't get a chance to ask a question today, you can contact us by using the email address on your screen, because we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> uh, you can visit the Kennedy Center website for more ad additional information about this and upcoming programs, as well as other sources on integrating the arts into the curriculum. I hope you integrate it more. Don't miss our next program on Thursday, March 8th at 11 a.m. Eastern, featuring John Sheska in Telling Stories. As we close the program today, since we kind of talked about music from blues and we talked about historic music such as Lift Every Voice and we talked about language from Turkey, we're gonna end with a piece that is truly of today for us. This is a piece called Planet Rock and it is one of the cornerstones of hip hop history. So if you don't know this song, you'll know it by the time we finish. My name is Jason Moran, thank you.